let's get started. Let's turn to John chapter 18. And I'll talk for a few minutes and then we'll read a scripture. So where do you get wise counsel from in, in your life? These are rhetorical questions. You can answer or not answer. You don't have to answer. But they're meant to make you think a little bit, to get your head jogging and, and, and thinking about who is it that you listen to and where is it that you get your information? Do you get it from social media? Do you get it from watching the news to hear about what's going on in the world? Do you get it from news apps on your phone? These days, we've got, we've got information and, and things coming from artificial intelligence or AI, chat GBT, all kinds of new ways to get information. What about your friends? Do you ask your friends for advice or input or knowledge? Do you ever gauge uh, who you're asking to say, is this somebody that I should be ask, asking for information? Do, is, are, are they successful in life? Do they make good life decisions for themselves? Or are you just talking to somebody that will agree with your point of view? Where, and, and, and what about your, your family? Is your family where you get all of your direction and your input? This is the way that grandma did it. This is the way that mom did it. This is the way that I'm expected to do it. Like I said, questions for us to start off with, for you, and I'll refer back to these a few times, but to actually think about where am I getting the information that I'm using to guide my decisions and my choices and how I'm going to live my life. These are important things. Maybe when you were younger... For those of you that are a little more mature, have a few more years of living experience than some others sitting in the room, but maybe you've been uh, learning, maybe you've learned over the years that it's important, you know, when your parents used to tell you, you shouldn't hang out with those people when you were in, in school or in high school. You shouldn't listen to those people or what it is that they're saying, you would say, but they're my friends. They like me. They're nice to me. They, you know, they accept me. And they say, yeah, they'll, they'll accept anything. They'll accept anybody because they want people to accept them. But the choices that they're, they're, that they're making and the way that they're living their lives is not leading to success and is oftentimes leading to trouble. And I don't want you, my son or my daughter, heading into that same trouble. So maybe you've learned, had a few experiences in life. So you've learned how to discern what you should be listening to. But a lot of times, what we're and so today we're talking about a basis for truth. So what is truth? It, nope, um, and, and again, we'll go with rhetorical question here. But let's read, let's read this scripture, and we'll start off with this. John 18, chapter 37, I mean, cha chapter 18, verses 37 and 38. Now, in this scripture, Jesus is on trial. The Jews want to kill him because he's, he's been going around preaching and teaching and talking about the truth that God actually intended in the Ten Commandments and in and in. Uh, the law of Moses and all of this, but how it had been twisted and turned by mankind. And so, and, and he was turning the people away from the religious leaders that had been doing the twisting, that had been doing the changing. And so they wanted to shut him up and to brand him as an outlaw and to say, you know, that by crucifying him or by killing him, then they were uh, crushing his reputation and we're hoping that people would stop listening to him. So he's in talking to the Roman governor, Pilate, and Pilate's asking the religious leaders and Pilate's asking Jesus and he's saying, why do they want to kill you? And he says, I don't know. 
I haven't really done anything. They call me this, they call me that, I do, you know. But Pilate is asking him, why, why do they want to get rid of you so bad? But if I'm going to kill you, the law says that there has to be a reason for us to crucify you or, or, or to put you to death. And I can't find that you've been doing anything wrong except telling the truth. So they want to kill him for telling the truth. Yikes. All right, so let's read. John 18, 37, it says, Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Because that's what they're telling me that you are, is that you're trying to subvert the government, the Roman government here in Jerusalem, and you're declaring that you are the king. And Jesus said, answered and said, you said that I am the king. I didn't say it. You said it. Or the religious leader said it. I've never said it myself. But you said that I am a king. To this end, but he said, to this end and for this reason, I came into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went back outside to talk to the religious leaders and said to them, I can find no fault with him at all. So Pilate is asked, so Jesus says, I've come to bear witness of the truth. I've come to tell the truth. I've come to tell people what God actually meant and what, the, and what is actually the truth and not the way that it's been twisted by the understanding or the words of man or by their traditions or by anything else. I came to tell the truth and the people that can hear the truth can hear my voice and listen to what I have to say. There's a lot of amens. You guys are all sitting here because in one way, shape, or form, you've come to hear that what, what we talk about here is truth in some ways, in most ways, but you have an ear to hear it. But what he say, but he turns around and said, but it, on the other side of that coin, if you don't have ears to hear the truth, if your ears are turned, tuned to hear misinformation, to hear misguided news, to hear rumor, to hear gossip, to hear this, and to believe it is truth, then you're not going to hear what I'm saying and be able to accept it as the truth. So, we have books. We've got physics, geometry, United States history, chemistry, algebra two, theological study Bibles, mm, and I don't know, what is that a concordance or a lexicon? We've got an iPad over here that can be used to study, uh, you know, look things up online. So the other day I, w I was doing a Wikipedia search. People use, sometimes they use Wikipedia to get some news and some information, and I was trying to look up the date of somebody's death like when they, when they died, and famous person, actor, and Wikipedia came up with three different dates for their death, so that was eight years apart and in one search. And so I'm sitting there looking, and I'm going, wait, so which one, which, which one is the right one? Which date is the day that this person actually died? We, we've had a lot of things in the news recently about, about history. About hi history, when I went to college, I went and my, my freshman history professor said that the first statement, his opening statement in the history class was all history is a fiction. And he just kind of sat there and let, everybody, and let everybody listen for a minute. And they said all history is a a fiction, and I, I was like, "Wait a minute! There's records, and people wrote about things, and they took pictures. And these days, they have video records of this or that." But he said, "The history that you're reading, the history books, are all fiction because they're all written from the perspective and the bias of the author 
that is writing them. And there's been a lot of changes to the history books and to, course, and to, to courses and to, to many different things over the years because there was new information that was acquired or there was new information that was allowed to see the light. Because sometimes, like they did with Jesus, like the religious leaders did with Jesus, they didn't want to tell everybody all of the information. They wanted to tell people to guide their thinking and to guide their believing in a certain direction to maintain manipulation and control. The church historically has done the same thing. That's why... There are legends and myths and things. That's why Jesus came. He said, I came to bear witness to the truth because the religious leaders had twisted the words of God to say things that God didn't actually mean. So throughout history, the leaders in the church have done the same thing. They would, they, because people, the church controlled education. For thousands of years, the church was the one that, that managed the education system. They taught all the schools so that, pe- so that they could teach people how to read, but they only taught the people to read because that's where they were getting information from, but they only taught the people to read that they could control, that were on their side. But not everybody else got education and got to learn and got to read because they didn't want everybody thinking their own way. They wanted people thinking the way that they were told. So it wasn't until the invention of the printing press that people actually got to read the Bible for themselves and see what God actually said. So where are you getting your truth? Are you getting it just from somebody that's like me? that's standing up here talking and running their mouth? Some church somewhere, some newscaster somewhere. The Bible tells us, though, that we, we're supposed to seek wise counsel. That mean, and, and, and in the Bible, it says, Jesus said, he said, prove me. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. Go out and check it. Go out and back it up. You would not believe after I've, you know, I've been in church since I was three years old, and it's been a really long time. <laughs> and you would not believe how many times I've sat in, you know, and, and listened to people, and they're making up doctrines or making up beliefs, and people will sit, or, you know, in, in these things, you know, things that are completely wrong, doctrines and teachings that are, are wildly off base, and people will sit out in the congregation and just soak it up and listen to it. They'll believe anything that they're told if somebody's standing up under lights with a microphone. Mm. You guys been watching any politics lately? <laughs> believe anything that, uh, that's said standing under lights in front of a camera with a microphone? Mm. So where are you getting your wise counsel from to help you make your decisions in life? Who are you listening to? Are you willing to go look up things somewhere and just because somebody's on TV or under lights with a microphone and, and say, no, that's not actually what it says. That's not actually what's happening. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. And I'm going to read verse 17. Nice short verse. You've probably heard this a whole bunch before. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Nice and short. So you may ask yourself, what does faith have to do with seeking wise counsel or with wisdom? So let me explain it to you. The Bible also says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. 
in church, many people try to say that faith is trying to believe in something that you can't explain, you can't see, you can't do anything. There's no basis of truth around it. There's no basis of belief in it. But you can't see the, the, the heart that's beating in your chest or the brain that's sitting inside of your skull. You can't see gravity even though it controls uh, the orbits of the planets and the tides and so many, and so many different things. And lots of, you were able to, we we're able to produce all, of, all kinds of different examples about, about faith. Um, but faith, for a person, it's the thing that makes something true to them. It makes something real to you. You can't see gravity. You can't see your heart unless you take it, you know, unless it, it's on in like an x-ray or an MRI or something like that. But I can't see it beating inside my chest, but, I, but, you know, education, research, x-ray, you know, all these things say that there's a muscle that's beating inside that's pumping blood through my system and making it circulate, even though I can't see it working. Science says that gravity holds the planets in orbit so that because and, and, and manages the tides and the phases of the moon and, and, and keeps us from floating off into space and, and a bunch of other things, but you can't see it. But faith, faith is the thing that even though you can't see it or you might not understand it because you might not have the knowledge or the experience to explain something, faith is the thing that you believe it even though you don't understand it or can't see it, and it makes it real to you. It becomes a foundation of reality in your life. That's what faith does. So when we're talking about a basis of truth, it's the belief that the words of God are real because the Bible tells us that the words of God are what spoke the universe into existence, that he spoke it all. And, it's, and it's, the, it's the strength and integrity of his word that keeps creation from disappearing and from blinking out. And it tells us that God's word is therefore always true because if God lied in one thing, then his word would no longer be true and the words that spoke the worlds into existence would then become null and void and everything would disappear. So our faith in God ties us to this belief that God's words are the, ba are, are the things that keep us alive, the things that keep, keep us in existence. But it's God's words, not, not, it, it's based on the integrity of his word, not the integrity of our understanding. Because just like these textbooks, the integrity of our understanding is constantly changing. Mankind is always updating their scientific discoveries and their scientific findings. And they're saying, this, this way that, that I was taught chemistry or this way that I was taught history when I was in high school decades ago is now different. That's why they have to update the textbooks. Because mankind has to say, our understanding was limited. And we didn't know everything that we thought that we knew. And we, we got new information that tells us that we were wrong. Or sometimes not that we're wrong, just that we didn't have a full enough understanding of what it was that we were teaching. So when I was younger, I used to think, I I would, I, when, the, when I first started noticing this, and I was in high school, and then I would go to college, and there was these other textbooks, and I was like, well, then I went to high school, and they were teaching me all lies. And why should I believe anything that, that, that they're saying? Who really says that any, any of this stuff that, I'm, that they're studying or that, that I'm studying or that they're teaching is true? How do I know? So that I had to start testing and trying and questioning what it is that I was being taught. And where, and, and, and where were the teachers and the instructors in the textbooks getting their information 
that they were teaching me that I was taking to be truth and I was trying to apply to my life and to use it. My belief was, was not steady, was not stable at first for a long time after that. And, and like with the, the professor that said that all history was a fiction. So I had to start searching and studying to find the basis Remember, today's title is a basis for truth. I had to start not just accept every single thing that I was told and swallow it hook, line, and sinker, but I had to go out and test some of it to find out whether it was worthy of my belief and my trust so that I could have faith in it, some kind of belief that it had a basis in reality. So... Let's talk a little bit about faith. Faith, pistis, the definition is a conviction of the truth of anything. That's what we're talking about. How strong is your conviction that something that you believe in, something that is a pillar of your identity or of, or of your life, how, how strong is your belief or your conviction that it is true? Hearing versus listening. Hearing is defined as the process or power or function of being able to perceive sound. So the Bible tells us that hearing comes from the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. But that word hearing is not just the word perceiving sound. The word that's used is a derivative of the same word, and it means to listen with intent. That you're paying attention to something on purpose. Faith comes by hearing, listening attentively on purpose in order to gain knowledge, wisdom, or understanding. Okay? To attend to, consider, consider what or has been said to understand and perceive not just the sound but the sense or the intent of what is being said that's what it means to listen that's how we that's how you develop your faith or your belief in something is to listen with intent and to judge it um, for yourself as whether or not you're going to believe it or put your faith in it. Mm. So your faith then is, is a result of what you choose to listen to, not just what you hear. So it is your responsibility and my responsibility to listen with intent to information that we are receiving and to judge it for ourselves as to whether it's true and whether we're going to put our faith in it or whether we're going to dismiss it. So that's your responsibility. Not just to believe every single thing that you're told, but to judge it, the information, and decide whether or not you're going to make it a part of your life and whether you're going to believe it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11. Another nice short verse. This is Jesus, and he's talking. And just like he told Pilate in John when we were just talking, it says... He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Sometimes in life, we're not going to want to believe something. We hear things and we say, I, I, don't, want, I don't want to believe that that's the truth. And we deny, 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 deny the information because it shakes the foundation of our reality. And so the way, the, it's so... If, if, if I'm hearing this thing and I'm believing that it's true, then I feel like nothing that I've ever known or heard or believed in my entire life can be relied on anymore. 
and it shakes the very foundation of your identity and your reality. So people choose to deny or choose to not hear or not to listen. But, so th- but, but some people are able to take in new information and able to learn new things, even though they're strong things, and can adjust their identity or their reality based on the new information that has come in, just like updating a textbook. And I say, my understanding wasn't necessarily wrong my entire life. It's just I was lacking information. And now that I have new information, I'm able to update my understanding. And it doesn't mean that I've lived my entire life incorrectly. It just means that I was living my life according, what, according to what I thought to be true. But now that I've learned a truth that supersedes the truth that I had known before, then I have to update all these other things in my life. I have to update my understanding, my knowledge, that, and, and the way that I act and the way that I think and the way that I believe in all of these other areas because I have learned something new. Some people yeah, they get comfortable living their lives and believing the things that they do, and they don't ever want to change it. So they face all these new informations and they build the denials in their life over time to account for the understanding that they so desperately want to hold on to. And when you meet these people later on in life, you're going, wow, you're crazy. It's like, what, what rock did you crawl out from under? And get with, with that's your understanding and that's your belief and that's, that's you, you know, are you serious right now? But because at some point in their life, this person has made a decision that, that this one principle that they want to hold on to, that they found out is not the truth or not the case or has been superseded. And, the, and, and that's the part. It's, it's like they stop developing as a person. They stop growing. And they're like a child in so many ways because they're refusing to update their basis of truth. So what kind of person are you going to be? You're going to refuse to continue to grow or to continue to change because at some point in your life you're going to face a moment where you say, I've been believing and acting and making decisions in my life according to the knowledge and understanding that I have, but, I'm un- it, but now that I've found out that I was wrong I'm unwilling to face my friends, my family, my coworkers, and the entire world and to tell them I was wrong. That's a lot of work, having to update and say, yeah, no, no, I know I, I, was, I was hardlining and I was, and I, and, and I was so strongly standing for this thing for so many years and basing my treatment of others off of what I believed, but I was wrong. And I'm sorry, and I apologize. That, that's a lot of apologizing. But for many people, the hardest part is, is the admitting that they're wrong. Nobody likes to be wrong. But we all are from time to time. Some of us more than others, like me. That's, oh, wait, no, that's, that's okay. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. So, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So, we're talking about seeking wise counsel. So, let's take it back to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is the book of the collection of wise sayings, of the wise uh, people. Uh, the Bible talks about Solomon being the wisest person that ever lived. And he made lots of dumb decisions. So wisdom and perfection are not the same thing. And having wisdom and using wisdom are also not the same thing. So we, we have to not only 
gain knowledge and understanding and wisdom, but we have to put it to use once, it, once we have it. But let's read Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. That's what we've been talking about, about studying and gaining knowledge and understanding. And it says that a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsels. Now, this word attain is the Hebrew word kana, and it means to get, acquire, buy, or possess. So a man of understanding, somebody, and we'll just go ahead and shorten that and we'll say uh, somebody with sense, because it's not just a man, it's a woman, it's anybody. It could be a child. A person with sense is going to, is going to attain wisdom. They're going to get, buy, possess, seek out, and take in wisdom no matter the cost. The Bible say the book of Proverbs also says that wisdom is the principal thing. That means it is the number one thing. It is the biggest thing. To learn how to live your life and where are you and where you're getting your information from. Brief example about interpretations again. The Bible, there's the huge controversy in church and been taught for millennia in different ways about the creation story in Genesis. And so when I would go to college or I would talk to people that, that hadn't been in church or they, they, weren't, they didn't have their ears tuned to listening to the scriptures, they're focusing on the fact that this story tells that the, that the world was created in seven days, 6,000 years ago. And that doesn't match, number one, it doesn't match the, the science that we, and the principles that we've learned. Uh, and we say that God created the universe and it was created orderly and by laws and everything and, and everything like this, but we're trying to interject our understanding into that because we're reading on the first day God created this, on the second day God created that, on the third day we cre God created that. And the example is that our understanding or our interpretations limited what it is and cause a rift between the church and science. And so science thinks that, that Christians are all crazy for believing in seven days in 6,000 years ago. And the church thinks that science is trying to deny the existence of God because it does because they're saying that something is different other than our understanding of what was written. So I like to give one brief example about the limitations of the understanding of man. The Bible says the Bible account of creation, so mankind bases the uh, we, we're talking about the, the rotations of the earth and gravity and all of this. And we count a day, it's divided into 24-hour periods, and it's based on the full, one full rotation of the earth on its axis. But man didn't know that and didn't have the ability to teach it or to know it, you know, scientifically. But that's, they would watch the stars go by. They would watch the, the sun go across the horizon or the moon go across the horizon. And that's the way that a day was measured in the seasons and everything else. They would, they would watch the stars changing in the sky and how they came back around and did, did the same rotation every time the earth went around the sun. So our understanding of hours and time and seasons and everything are based on the rotation of the earth on its axis and are measuring it by the movement of the sun, moon, and stars. But in the, in, in the creation account, the sun, moon, and stars were not created until the fourth day of creation. 
So how were the days, the days measured until the sun, moon, and the stars were created on the fourth day? And man wasn't created until the seventh day. So who was doing the recording of all of this stuff? And so you say, maybe mankind was writing, or, you know, we're, we're writing this and the understanding is based on not just, maybe it was the way that it was interpreted or the way that the story was passed down, periods of time that passed in between the stages of creation. But my faith that, that the universe was created by, and me were created by God, my answer is, is not shaken by the fact that somebody else's understanding couldn't pick out the fact that the sun, moon, and stars, how we define days, hours, and minutes, and seasons weren't even generated until over halfway through the story of creation. So this is what I'm talking about, about believing everything that you're told and not reading it for yourself and being able to gain some understanding and update your thinking with new information without destroying your faith in God. See how I just did that? And my understanding may not be correct either. But is your understanding of God going to destroy your faith that he exists? Or are you going to believe in God regardless of whether your understanding matches what is actually truth? Even if, you're never, even if we don't ever know exactly what the truth is, we don't find it out until later or until eternity or something. All right, get, acquire, buy, or possess at any cost. So if you're worried about the state of the world and what's going on around you, let's read one more scripture and we'll be done. Seek wise counsel. Why? Update, get a basis of truth and keep it up to date like the software and the apps on your phone so that it will work the way that it's supposed to. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 33, it says, Whoso hearkens unto me, and if you read all the way back up to around verse 20, this is actually being written from the perspective of wisdom. So it's supposed to be wisdom that is talking to you here. Whoso hearkens to me or hearkens to wisdom will dwell safely and will be quiet from the fear of evil. Being, that word quiet means to rest securely. So the person or persons that seek wisdom will learn how to interpret the world that is, and the things that are going on around them without fear the wars, the rumors of wars, the controversies, the anger, the hatred, the frantic behavior, the uncertainty, and everything that people in life face and deal with. But a person that seeks, obtains, and uses wisdom, true wisdom, can rest securely in the knowledge of what's going on, of, of what's going on around them. They'll have a correct understanding and a good interpretation that isn't provided by your favorite newscaster or by a robot and AI or anything. And you can rest securely in spite of the evil in the world that is going on around you. Let's all stand to our feet. So if you're worried about the state of the United States or about wars going on in Israel or the possibility that Russia is going to declare war on NATO or something, I, mean, I, I keep hearing every day wars, rumors of wars. People are concerned about who's going to lead this country 
come voting time in November, and if this happens or if that happens, and is it the end of the world, and are we all going to die, and are our lives all going to end? So I always like to point people back to the fact when Jesus, Jesus told everybody, no man knows the days or the hours that the world is going to end. So keep living your life and keep going on because Jesus said he didn't even know. And he was the son of God. And if he's not going to know, you're not going to know. So why are you going to run around scared and worried all the time? The world was here before Jesus came to die on Calvary. It's been here since he left, went back to heaven, and it's still here and it's still going. So stop living your life in fear, digging, digging holes in the ground and stocking up on canned goods and, and, and running around scared or concerned about your gas prices or about this or about that and know that the world's going to keep going. And the best thing that you can do is to get the wisdom of how to, how to live in the world as it is right now. And how to deal with the world around you and not to run from it. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. Thank you that you have provided a plan for us, a plan of good and not for evil, to give us an end, an expected end, an end that you created for us and, in, and intend for us to have, a good end, a peaceful one. But we need your wisdom and we need your understanding to help us find that end that you've prepared for us and that you expect us to have. So the book of James tells us that God will give wisdom to all men and give them as much as they want and all they have to do is ask. So Lord, we ask you for your wisdom and your guidance on how we should live our lives and what we should do to find the end that you have prepared for us and to live our best life and our full life all the way to that end. Thank you, Lord, for your help in all that we do, for your strength and wisdom as we go out into this week and into the rest of our lives. Give us wisdom to face what we're going to face. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.